All right, now let's take a look at changing file or folder attributes. Now, to, the way we can change file attributes is pretty simple. We're just going to select test here. We're going to right click on it. We're going to select properties. And here we have many options here. Let's say we wanted to hide this file. We could select hidden. We could select advanced. And then say if this folder is ready for archive or not, we could compress it so that the folder is a lot smaller, thus sa saving some disk space. We can encrypt this so that the information is a little bit more secure. We, uh, we could set our security parameters here to allow, say, who is allowed to view this file, who can edit the file, who can delete the file, different attributes here. If we're on a network, then we could select, you know, when we go to change permissions and add people, we could select different ways of who is in what group, or we want to select the whole group. Whatever the case may be, we have lots of options here for changing the attributes of our folders, and same thing with our files. If we right click on a file here, we'll do and look at our junk file here. You can see it tells us all kinds of information about our file when it's created, when it was modified. Do we want to make that a read-only file so that people cannot make changes to it? Uh, maybe this is just an informational document we want out there. Then we can set that to read-only because we don't want our users to be able to make changes to the content. Um, we could hide this file as well. Um, perhaps you have a case where you need to hide files and then create paths to that file directly later so that everyone that has permission to that folder can't necessarily see that file. But with the shortcut you've given them and the permissions that we've set in our security feature, they can access that file. So lots of information here. You can tell if there are previous versions of this file from it being saved and resaved, um, if you need to revert to an older one. So lots of attributes here in our properties. Sometimes, like I mentioned before, there are viruses that go in and set this attribute of hidden to active, and then you don't think there's your files are there. In all reality, they really are. And that's where you need to go in and go back up here and check your folder and search options, show hidden files, then you'll see this file, it's kind of grayed out, and then you can right click on that file now that you can see it there, have access to it, and then change your attribute back from hidden to unhidden. Now we're going to take a look at some of our Windows tools that we often use, such as the system window, system information window, the control panel, the action center, the UAC or user account control dialog box, and Windows help and support. First we'll take a look at the system window. And there's obviously, since this is Windows, we have different ways of getting there. One of the easiest ways is to go to the start button, click start, then go to right click computer and select property. This is my favorite way of getting here. And you'll see our system window is now here and we have lots of useful information found here such as what's the addition of the Windows version that we're using here. You can see that we are using Windows 7 Professional. If the operating system has different service packs we could see what service pack we're on. We're on the service pack 1. Windows Refuse or Microsoft refused to do a service pack 2. So if you're ever doing an install of Windows 7 to get to service pack 1, if you don't already have that ISO or that image, then you've got a lot of updates to go through um, as you're cleaning the install. But if you have a, a disk that has service pack 1 or an image that has service pack 1, it'll save you a lot of time. There's still like a hundred and something um, updates once you do service pack 1. Uh, it would have been great for Microsoft to give a service pack 2. They refused to do so, so we, we don't really have a service pack 2. Uh, with Windows XP, there were three different service packs. Uh, with <coughs> Windows 10 right now, obviously it's brand new, so we don't really have a lot of, we don't have a service pack uh, to go through yet to show you how, how many updates and stuff there are yet, but I'm sure we'll get to that in the future. Uh, some of the other information here is the Windows Experience Index. Um, with here, we don't really have that uh, because I'm using a virtual machine. So the rating is not here. But if we did have one, then it would um, anywhere from, uh, generally speaking, it just depends on your hardware as to what your rating is. 
but the overall index rating is going to be somewhere between 1.0, which hopefully it's not, all the way up to a 7.9. And there's different factors that feature into this. The RAM that you're using, the graphics, the hard drive, um, so the processor speed. So it's there's a lot of factors that figure into this overall Windows Experience Index. So if you uh, get a chance, take a look at that uh, on your system. Click on it and see what it's possibly saying is holding your overall Experience Index down from being a very high number. Other helpful information here is how much RAM is installed. Um, now you see that I only have two gigs showing here. That's because I used a virtual machine, and that's all I allotted from my physical machine to be dedicated to my virtual machine when it is running. You can see what type of system you have. If it's a 32-bit or 64-bit operating system, this is very important to know. When you go to install applications, I you can't install a 64-bit application onto a 32-bit operating system. On the other hand, you can install 32-bit applications onto a 64-bit operating system. When you go to work on a customer's computer, whether it's uh, through a remote session or face-to-face, -face, this is one of the best windows to go to to get some of that key information right away. As I said, there are multiple ways of getting to our system window, if you have File Explorer, Windows Explorer open, you can simply right click on computer there and select properties and that will take you to the system window as well. Now if you want a application that can give you a lot more system information, I suggest the system information window. And you can get to this by typing in msinfo32.exe. So we'll do that now. We'll go ahead and close this go down to start and we'll just type that in real simple just msinfo 32.exe and you can see as I was typing that it auto populated up here we click that and our system information window will open now in here we have lots of information about our system such as the installed hardware software the current system configuration and any currently running programs and you can just click on this and look at this all on your own but you can see that I have Windows 7 Professional this is the version I'm using, Service Pack 1 and you can see the manufacturer is obviously Microsoft what the name of my computer is I'm using a virtual box you can see that there's all kinds of information what our root directory is for our Windows um, lots of information here here we have our boot devices available what, how much memory we have and as we saw earlier in the system window, 2 gig, what type is set, how much is set for virtual, uh, all that information is here. We can see that we have, let's say we want to look at our hard drive. We can take a look at components. We can go down to storage and then we can click on information there. We can see that with my virtual machine, I didn't really have put a lot of space dedicated from my physical hard drive to my virtual hard drive, so I just gave it enough for the operating system and then enough to have some files there, so not a whole lot. But as you look at it on your system, you can, you'll can you see different numbers. What all drives are available? You can take a look at your network set up. You can take a look at any type of printing you have set up. If you have a CD-ROM, and if you do, is that what type is that? Is that a DVD readable, writable? Lots of information. You can see for this one, we I just created that it has a CD-ROM per se. So a lot of information that you can click on to, in msinfo 32exe So I can't stress enough. Take a look around in here. Get familiar with you know. Oh, I can go in here and look at my processor or BIOS version that's installed. You know, I can go in here and look at, you know, the operating system installation directory as I showed you earlier, hard drive size, names of currently running drivers. So you can maybe need to take a screenshot of this so that if you have another computer or you're going to be working on this computer possibly in the future, you know what all drivers need to be installed. So you can have those up and ready or saved onto a, uh, you know, a network share or possibly a cloud area where you can easily get to those drives if you have to do a, a reinstall or update a driver.